We all love the saying, Rome was not built in a day. But we need to recognize, when Rome was eventually built, it was so magnificent because it was built day by day, bit by bit, every day. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a privilege for me, Midshipman Amre Narayan Singh, to be present here at this important forum representing the Indian Naval Academy, Edimala, an institution that shapes the future naval leaders from freshly minted students just out of school. I would like to thank the organizers of the National Trainer Summit 2017 for having given the Indian Naval Academy this opportunity to come here. I am an eight-term cadet of the Indian Naval Academy and I'm still under training and would be liking to share my experiences on how I am being trained into a, shape, uh, into a future naval leader. Gentlemen, the future naval leaders at the Indian Naval Academy are trained bit by bit, day by day, every day, just like Rome. So my efforts will be to tell you about how we are trained and how the training all about. Three years back, I was just like another young Indian student dreaming of my future under the overprotective environment of my parents. But the last three odd years at the Naval Academy at Edimala, with over a thousand other young Indians like me undergoing a BTEC curriculum, along with the professional military training, physical fitness regime, soft skill and articulation training activities, all packed tightly and happening in tandem under a very regimented and value-based and methodological training environment has transformed me, an easygoing, never a care student into a disciplined senior cadet to take up leadership positions in the Indian Navy of tomorrow, ready to go to the harm's way to protect the maritime and security interests of our great nation. The BTEC education that I have been provided with at the academy has developed in me a technical bent of mind to approach every problem at hand with scientific, logical, and synchronized solutions. As an officer in the Indian Armed Forces, I live by the Chetwood motto, which says, and I quote, the safety, honor, and welfare of your country comes first, always, and every time. The honor, welfare, and comfort of the menu command comes next. Your own ease, comfort, and safety comes last, always, and every time, unquote. The Indian Naval Academy is more than just a destination for thousands of students who aspire to be a part of the officer corps of the Indian Navy and the Indian Coast Guard. It is a journey, a womb to tomb calling whose impact upon us, the cadets, extends well beyond our lifetimes. It bestows upon us a special strain of immortality that emerges, that emerges from a legacy of abiding honor, a feature disappearing from most walks of life today. The mission of Indian Naval Academy is best summed up by the Academy's motto, which says, shaping future naval leadership. Now I'll attempt you to give a glimpse of what I underwent since my arrival at the imposing gates of the Indian Naval Academy, Edimala. Spread over 2,500 acres of stunningly picturesque and verdant environs in the historic land of Edimala, Kerala, the Academy runs a full-fledged four-year B.Tech degree course under the aegis of Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi and is fully supported and supervised by the All India Council for Technical Education. This stringent BTEC program is over and above the demands of a parallel syllabus that runs concurrently and involves training in a number of disciplines and subjects related to the Indian Navy that is called the professional military training. In addition to English, which every cadet has to have fluency over, the academy teaches of us one foreign language among Russian, Arabic, French and Chinese. We learn to ride horses, sail boats in backwaters and then in open seas, swim a minimum distance of one and a half kilometers, shoot every kind of small caliber weapons that the Indian Navy requires us to do, learn to dine and conduct ourselves in a social environment of cadets mess and experience leadership through mentoring our juniors in squadrons, all happening concurrently. We are expected to qualify ourselves in the BTEC degree curriculum, naval subjects, pass physical fitness tests, and conduct ourselves honorably, assessed for officer-like qualities, tested in arduous camps. Only then are we promoted to the next semester. The Indian Naval Academy, therefore, expects each of us to be gentlemen extraordinaire. In the quest to hone our bodies and intellects, the Academy remains alive to the very substantial potential 
that the technology offers by the way of innovative training, mechanisms, procedures, processes, and systems. The Lean Academic Faculty of MTech and above, uniformed officers of the Navy, and the UPSC selected civilian professors shape and nurture intellect with great diligence and commitment, imbuing a scientific temper that will, over the next several years of our service, act as both an enabler as well as a significant force multiplier. The creation and sustenance of curiosity, development of thinking differently, the ability to wrestle with and then articulate technological and operational concepts, these are the small samples of kind of abilities that the academy seeks to develop in us. While the scientific bend of mind and synchronization with a contemporary technology is achieved through the BTEC in applied electronics and communication engineering, mechanical engineering, and electronics and communication engineering, the academy provides a great amount of exposure to the practical aspects of our theory classes with the aid of modern laboratories that even IITs are envious about. And this is a comment from our visiting faculties from various IITs. Additional coverage of important topics is provided through guest lectures by course specialists from instructors like IITs, IISC, and NIT, either in per person or over the National Knowledge Network. We have been repeatedly informed and grilled and reiterated that INA is not producing engineers for the industry, and nor is it intending to identify and nurture scientists. The Academy wants us to be technically equipped to man, operate, and maintain sophisticated sensors and weapons or the high-tech machinery with its control systems that the Navy has on board its ships, submarines, and aircraft with a singular aim to protect India's maritime interests wherever they may lie. Deployed ships, submarines, and long-range maritime patrol aircrafts are required to repair and sustain high technological equipment during deployments. There is no provision for returning to base to affect repairs. Any shortcoming or failure in securing our country's interests is unacceptable for our souls. And our souls have been branded with the concept as a future naval officer that we just cannot fail. While some may claim that leaders are born, our academy strongly believes that the leaders can be created through correct inputs in a challenging environment with right dose of education and training. True to its motto, the academy shapes each one of us through structured processes of mentoring and grooming. As we go through a grueling four-year training, each one of us strives to be physically fit, mentally alert, and morally straight. Any shortcoming in these aspects, and we are out. The Academy is not an indulgent mother. Discipline, and more importantly, self-discipline in its officers and men is the bedrock of a successful armed force. Every action for the first, from the first day of my joining is performed at an order from a senior without a deemer. The fundamental philosophy is to do it first and then ask questions. To ingrain this philosophy, the academy follows a system of hierarchy, wherein a, cadets who, a cadet who joins even six months before the other remains a senior for life. This ensures that the whole bodies of men are led by a single senior without hesitation. This also provides opportunity to everybody of us to experience leadership with those who are junior to us. Leadership is not just about giving orders. Leading by example in every facet of life at the academy and doing what one preaches are reality checks that come to the fore at every step in our daily life. We are distributed among six squadrons, which is a hostel and house like you all have in your schools for our life at INA. We live for the honor of our squadron. The squadron is our identity for life. Senior cadets in our squadrons are responsible for teaching the juniors every aspect of life of life in the squadron, including the traditions and customs of the squadron during their stay at the academy. This includes right way of dressing, the art of fine dining, sports and games. He is also responsible for the performance of weak cadets and help prepare for their tests, camps and competitions. This develops empathy, caring attitude and concern for the others. Every cadet in the Indian Naval Academy lives by an honor code at the Academy. The Academy expe expects that each one of us will act with honesty, integrity, and respect for the other, with the highest standards of morals and ethical values. I am duty-bound not to lie, cheat, steal, or slander, nor as importantly, tolerate who do so. A cadet swears to do the right thing 
always and live with honor, courage, and commitment. The honor code of the academy eventually becomes a part of cadets' life and extends to even in their future career as an officer in the Indian Navy. And any violation of the honor becomes extremely embarrassing. It, the saying goes, the Battle of Waterloo was won on the play, playgrounds of Eton. Therefore, sports, sports and games form an important part of shaping processes in each of our lives. Sports like football, hockey, basketball, volleyball, cross country, boxing, swimming and water polo are used as instruments to develop character and winning spirit. When we join the academy, we are put through a scientifically developed physical fitness program, which takes a student who has had no outdoor in his school to gradually making him capable to endure the toughest of physical challenges by the end of the third year in the INA. A young boy who had never played a single game or run even 100 meter for that matter in school turns proficient in at least four team games to represent his squadron, runs at least 25 kilometers with a battle pack and swims more than 1,500 meters in just two years of his training. Lee Lakoka said, and I quote, you can have brilliant ideas, but if you can't get them across, your ideas won't get you anywhere, unquote. English is the language of the seas, of the internet, and of the Navy. The Academy takes tremendous efforts in developing soft skills in us. Prepared talks, roundtable conversations, debates, declamations in English are conducted five days a week, addressed by eminent personalities, and experts in their fields who expose us not only to good speakers but also helps us widening our horizons beyond core and professional subjects. Grooming, which points towards outward appearance and etiquette, which is defined as a code of behavior that describes expectations of social behavior within a society or group, are important aspects taught to us to present ourselves favorably to the world at large as appearance influences opinion of those we interact with. I love my crew cut, it suits the weather. I love my uniform, and when I wear my jeans, I prefer a clean pair without tears and rips, which fits me well, and does not fall off to expose my posterior. I prefer a sober colored t-shirt or a shirt tucked inside the waistband. The academy has taught me to wear my personality. As military officers, we do not follow fashion. Military style is permanent. Let me therefore assure you, that we are committed and happy to lead an action-packed, action disciplined life at the Academy and look forward to our future way of life as naval officers to keep the peace around our country so that nation's progress is unhindered. With that, I'll now hand over to one of my trainers who will exchange notes with all you trainers. Good day.